The following program is brought to you as a community service of Time Warner Cable. The views and opinions expressed on this program by the hosts and guests do not necessarily represent the views of Time Warner Cable. Jerry Mines and I'm Deborah Mines and welcome to It's a Family Affair and today we're going to do another book club okay, <laughs> Jerry yeah. Deb's book club and we're going to talk about seven myths that can kill your relationship and it's excerpted from the book All You Need is Love and Other Lies About Marriage by John W. Jacobs MD. Cool. Deb, what has happened to marriage? Well, it seems to be an optional arrangement these days. Okay. Um, it's, there's no stigma attached to divorce really anymore. And that's a big change because, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the 40s and the 50s, you know, Even women, the 60s, even in the, seven, in the early 70s, when I was growing up and, you know, but when you grew up in the 40s, I'm sure it was quite tough. <laughs> it was really tough. Yeah, they wrote him out of town on a rail, as a matter of fact. Okay, tarred and feathered him. No, but it, re it was really sad because so much stigma was associated uh, with divorce. And, mm -hmm. of course, the, the female tended to bear the brunt of that stigma, and then the children did. Right. And they were talked about as... Oh, they're from broken homes. Right. Well, homes aren't broken. Sometimes it's better to split the sheets and create a safe and healthy environment for the children right. than it is to keep children in real unhealthy situations. Absolutely. So it's changed. Yeah. The stigma that once was really dark has now lifted because more than half of the people in America are from you know, families, more than half the kids are from families that have been through a divorce. And now we call them blended families. How nice that word, blended. It's not broken, yes. it's blended. It's blended. like mixed in. Here's yeah. a stepkid, there's a stepkid. We call but, them Brady Bunches. <laughs> but okay. most things that are blessings have a double edge to them. And that's perfect because the word blessing is from the French word blessure, which means to wound in order to bless. Yes. So while it's great that people can get out of destructive marriages that are poisoning their soul, it is also true that people that have perfectly good marriages feel more now than ever that they have this option, one foot in, one foot out. And that can wreak havoc on just marriage because it's kind of a tough situation it, to put it, two people in the same house and have them get along. You know, it really is, Deb. And one of our classic shows uh, called... Um Love Tools talks about this one foot in and one foot out as the ambivalence merry-go-round. Or the hokey pokey. Well, I'll tell you, it's <laughs> both. Okay, That ambivalence merry-go-round, however, is self-torture because it keeps changing and spinning like the merry-go-round and it is crazy making. And of course, we taught couples in that show to become warriors make a choice and never look back. Quit yes. indulging in that ambivalence, well, but yes. it's hard to do it's, in today's it's hard culture. To do. Well, let's put it this way, we're saturated. We have been saturated yeah. in the me first idea. This has been important on a cultural, from a cultural scale of growth and evolution, that we go from like a tribal mind to saying, well, I'm not sure I want to go the direction of the tribe to, I wonder what I think, you know, the banner of the 60s, you know. And 70s, and the 70s. I, me, me, my decade. Yes, and the, the, but the positive, again, that double-edged sword is you do get a chance to say, I wonder if this religion is too small for me, this government's too small for me, this marriage is too small for me, the, my family's ideas and prejudices are too small for mm -hmm. me. This is mm -hmm. what America is based on yeah. and we have grown into and reach really kind of the apex 
of individuality. And now we're seeing some of the darker sides of individuality, which is called selfishness. And that's and some of those greed. apes with pecs, you know, some of those Neanderthals that... Uh, apes with what? Well, you called it the apex. So I thought we would <laughs> we'd have a play on words, you know, those <laughs> apes with pecs. Okay. <laughs> We're not going quite that far, but we are <laughs> suggesting that that okay. that whole mythology of the you know the I me me my and I'm so self important <laughs> nonsense you know throws the baby out with the bathwater. Okay. We lose the connectedness to others, to marriage, to family, and to the fact that you know in this family of man we only get there you know by t taking others along with us. Okay. Now you talked about mm -hmm. the fast pace and the culture. Well, the, the messages we're bombarded with are the myth of the perfect mate. Right. Well, per, you know, being an individual, having a perfect body, having a perfect life, uh, of course you're going to have to have a perfect mate. And that's really difficult since <laughs> I haven't achieved perfection yet and you haven't either. That's right. <laughs> uh, to be compared to these media images of perfection. Oh, Lord, in the movies. I mean, it's awful. Yeah. You, you talked about watching, you know, J-Lo and then... Uh, looking over at your wife, okay. Or Kate Winslet or anybody else, and then right. seeing a potato. Right, okay. Kate Winslet, yeah, to a potato. I mean, you look at your mate after watching Lord of the Rings, or you know, like, not you, no, not you. You look uh, no, just like be, Orlando Bloom to me. Of course, yes. And yet, Mr. Potato Head, okay, <laughs> you know, that, that she goes home with, it, it's not fair to compare those perfect mm -hmm. Playboy bunny and, and Fabio ideals young, young. with reality, because beauty really is an inner thing. It's not this you know, external sort of idyllic. And that's part yeah. of the mythology that has damaged marriage is because we're just expecting too much and not being realistic. And about we're just life. showing more of the undressed too. Yes. You know, so it's Ooh. not just like in the old days when you saw a movie and it, it was pretty Julie Andrews running around on the meadow. We're now looking at, you know, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen in the shower. Well, I'm not, I'm not really into that film, but that's where it get we cross the line as a culture and it you know there's there's this thing about us we live in animal bodies we're spiritual we live in animal bodies yeah. you expose the animal body and animal instincts or the first three chakras enough to this kind of stimulation and you know you got to deal with it I yeah. mean I'm not saying go back to the horse and buggy days I'm not a neo luddite <laughs> turn off your <laughs> lights and light a candle you're gonna have to live in this world we just want to shatter your myths there it is you're not the media and is is, a, is an, an, a fantasy that's and, constantly be tossed and, at you. And Deb, before we shatter the seven deadly myths, I want to mention Jacob's comments about three facts. Okay, first is that married people report being happier than singles only during the first two years of marriage. Or exactly, and what Frank Pittman says, when you get married, you don't, you not get married to be happy. You're getting married to be married. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting married to be married. There it is. Now there are two positive facts that Jacobs mentions, and and the first is married people are more stable, and pool their emotional, financial, and creative resources to make a better whole. Yes, this good enough marriages that we see all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, if people can stick it out with each other, they've chosen wisely. You know, you're not going to meet the perfect person, but you got somebody who's got a brain. You got somebody who's a good person morally. You got a person who doesn't make you want to barf. You know, when you look at them. <laughs> and I'm trying to be really realistic. And <laughs> it be a little better than that. Well, babe? I'm going to okay. go there. Okay. Okay. Great. And okay. Um, <laughs> somebody who, who pretty much has the same, you know, future plans as you. You can work it out and when you do I mean divorced women will be the and men but women really get it bad when they divorce when they yeah. divorce mm -hmm. will be the first ones to agree with me it's rough out there on that road of life paying your own health insurance health insurance alone can wipe you out it's not a reason to stay in an abusive marriage never God will walk with you if you have to walk out of that one and, and you'll find your way but the facts are is that when you do pool your resources it makes it easier. I mean, two people earning a living, sharing one mortgage, yeah. uh, consulting with each other about how to raise the kids, even if they don't always agree. And I mean, there's so many things that you do that I can't do. Like even attaching your microphone, I mean, <laughs> you, you figured out how to conceal the cord and I was going to like loop it up around the back of the building and you know, you just know stuff like that. And you cook. And do some oh, yeah, come on. other don't wonderful give me the things. Cook thing. you, well, you do, because I certainly don't. <laughs> but you parent and you bring sensitivity and compassion. So, yeah. even, uh, Jacob says, even moderately happy marriages share all these benefits. And of course, 
we're working to move our marriage into those mythic levels that we ins try to inspire you guys to do because you can have it better than the average. Now, yeah, let's right. take a look, <clears throat> Deb, at the seven deadly myths. And the first one is really a Beatles song, and it's, all you need is love. Well, it's actually true. If, if you were Jesus Christ, well, you wouldn't be married, but if you were in a, carrying this energy of absolute and unconditional love, um, you know, everything would work for you. But we, we really don't know what love means. So we're going to, love is romance in our culture. Mm -hmm. And cult, uh, couples really believe that romance will go on forever. Romance ends, I love it, right out of the article. Of this <laughs> book. Romance ends, relationships are complex. And right. we need to learn interpersonal skills with our mate. Yeah, and, and unconditional love as is implied is is what we try to have for our children. Well, it's what we really feel for yeah. them. You know, we'll do but, just about anything for our kids. Right, but with our mate, we really have to work at this unconditional love. It, it, yeah. It's a process. It's, it's you, a, you take up, you know, your cross and do it because yeah. it's going to help you become a better person, which isn't real fashionable these days. It's better to look good right. than to feel good. Now, as one recovering workaholic to those others out there in TV land, don't sacrifice your marriage on the altar of work. Don't. Okay. There needs to be yeah. fun and family time and, and more yeah. importantly, time for you and your mate to, you know, have a have a relationship yeah. and have a romantic life together. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look at the myth that I hear a lot, you know, uh, and it's it really it bothers me. It's well, people don't really change. You know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Nonsense. Yeah. That's incorrect. Yep. It's pessimistic. And it's just not true. It sabotages your efforts to improve your marriage. Yeah, because we must learn how to change. Like when I work with so many men's groups, we, you know, we teach men's tools. What are men's tools? They're tools that men can learn to become better men. And they develop a memory muscle of how to communicate non-toxically, how to fight fair, how to listen to their mate, you know, how to be emotionally present, how to be vulnerable. But they're, they're things we memorize. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, men can change, women can change, kids can change. Absolutely. And it all starts with yourself. Got it. And you got to have the guts to try. Yeah, that's a really, really key concept. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Yeah. And I, because I work with a lot of women and men, but with women, a lot of times they're, they've got a mat on. They're saying, you know, when he changes, I'll change. Or he's done so many things to me. But the problem with that is, then you're living in unhappiness soup all the time. When you decide to become a clear communicator, a fair communicator, develop compassion binoculars, and maybe imagine what his world looks like, not be codependent wimp, I'm not saying right. that, but learning how to speak your honest truth in a way that doesn't bludgeon someone to death, you're beginning with you. When you begin to lift your own world up and say, you know, how can my days be full of more joy? When, when either party begins to do that, how could I bring more meaning? Uh, how could I bring more meaning to my life? And it, it helps to, to catch your partner some yeah, slack. And I want to tagline that. You have become so much kinder as I've started to work on me and trying to become so much kinder. So it's holographic, it's reflexive, it's a process. So, you know, guys just don't sit around there waiting for your wife, you know, to become nicer. It starts with you. It's now, a lot of work, too. I mean, yeah. if you knew how many workshops I go to every year to learn and, and have my mind blown and how many books I'm reading, mm -hmm. you know, people come in there like, I didn't get it after three sessions. Like, no, you didn't. I've been it working on this for 25 years. A lot of work. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot of work, but it's worth it. It's really worth it. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, myth number three is when you get married, you create your own family legacy and everything that happened in the past doesn't count. Nonsense. Yes. Okay. You are going to be really influenced. Go here's ahead. the sad news. You know, yeah, your uh, dysfunctional family of origin, you're dragging right along with you, mm -hmm. and it influences your expectations and your communication styles. I was listening to a man yesterday who said, I didn't realize, you know, because I thought I'd pretty much put my family in the past, but the nasty things I was saying to my wife sounded exactly like the things my dad said to me when I was a little boy word yes. for word. Even the intonation was the same. And wow, was he correct. And expectations. I have modern couples, I mean couples, are they modern? They're in their 20s and 30s, who want the, the woman who they married who is a 
successful businesswoman to suddenly become, you know, the June Cleaver, just to be able to be in the kitchen and take care of the kids and work and do all that stuff. Didn't think that consciously, but when the child was born, it clicked in Neanderthal type thinking, you know, you woman, me Tarzan. So, you know, if, you, if you're still really young, this is some good advice that will help life later. Develop a really good relationship with your parents and that well, later in life will really help your relationship with your partner begin to feel like a breeze. Deb, we're going to take a break mm -hmm. and we're going to come back and talk about the other uh, four myths that will kill your marriage in just a moment. All right. Okay. There's the wind and the rain and the mercy of Father who say Appreciation. Pass it on. As mom, you always were the perfect a message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Cable TV offers you more of everything. More choice of what you and your family want to watch. And more control over what you don't. With cable, you have so many programming choices that come into your home. And more ways to limit which ones your kids have access to. And because it's cable, we're giving you more. More information on how you can best manage all of cable's choices for your family. Call your local cable company or go to controlyourtv.org for more on how to do the right thing. Hi, welcome back to It's a Family Affair. I'm Deborah Mites, and Jerry Mites is sitting right over there. Hey, here I am. Being a good boy. Yep. You know, we're having a fun show. We're talking about the seven myths that can kill your relationship. Mm -hmm. And this is from a book uh, by John Jacob... Jingleheimer Smith. Jingleheimer? Okay, Smith. Okay. John, J John W. Jacobs. I'm sure he was just tormented in childhood. Oh, I bet they beat an MD him in school. Got to call right. him Dr. Jacobs. Him. Right. And his book all is, you need is love. Yeah, All You Need Is Love and Other Lies. And, you know, we, we went through the myths, uh, the first three myths, you know, uh, one was all you need is love, two is people don't really change, and three uh, was when you get married, you create your own family legacy, and nothing from your family of origin really affects you. Not and true. Not true. There it is. And now we're going to move on to myth number four. And, you know, when I read this one, babe, I was reminded of that Jim Carrey show we saw at Eternal the Sunshine of the Spotless Palm, Mind. Palmador? Palm Door. Palm Door, yes. He always wants to pronounce that E. Yes, I know. Palmador. Great art Pompadour. theater here in Palmador. town. And, and, uh, and, and Jim Carrey says to this r rather chatty, eccentric, Kate Winslet. Charismatic, yeah, Kate. Um, he says, well, just because you talk all the time doesn't mean we're communicating. <laughs> I love that line. I really do. Yeah. Even though I'm more the Kate Winslet. You certainly are, my darling. Yeah. Okay, right, okay. And, you know, and here's the myth. We talk all the time, but my spouse doesn't know how to listen. Right. Well, you know, couples do talk a lot, but most communicate very That's poorly. That's the truth. That's the truth. And it's the number one thing we teach in couples counseling is talk tools. Because 85% of the problems in marriage and family out there are because people don't know how to communicate well, they, effectively. It's gotten, you know, just a little bit of information is a dangerous thing because a lot of couples say to each other, I feel. They've learned that I feel is healthy. Uh -huh. Then they finish with, I feel you're just a huge jerk. Right. Exactly. And they think that's an I message. Uh -huh. It lacks a little bit of humility and it's called name calling. And so it's a you message. Right. Yeah. It's a you message. Every, you, every time you walk in the door, you have to slam it. You're always putting me down. These you are. You never listen to me anymore. Never, always, you. I feel you're a jerk. These are toxic and they sound like, so people give up. They come in to see us and they're, oh man, I tried these eye messages. And, well, you just, you're a little close, but no cigar. And what we do Finish is we Finish the keep, eye with, I'm feeling sad. I'm, I'm hurting. Get into your 
vulnerable. I feel, I need, I want, without the you, should, or any other toxic yeah. trigger word. And that's what we count, we keep score on in couples counseling, is how many toxic trigger words are being exchanged in the process. There's another thing I want to add to this that I think is, is just as important as the toxic trigger words. I absolutely know it for myself and for the people I work with. Attitude is everything. Mm -hmm. I promise, I've, I've schooled couples in the, in the non-toxic communication and they still have the attitude. Right. They deliver their I messages like Tony Soprano mm -hmm. on a bad day. Okay. So <laughs> it's, <Whoa. laughs> yeah. So it's not enough to say, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, you know? Yeah. It's, Body language is 90% of communication. Intonation. Intonation, inflection. Facial and the gestures. other part is all day long, all day long, what are you thinking about your mate? Because that's going to influence. What are you thinking about your kids? What are you thinking about other people? Because it's going to come out. In a in vibe. How, in yeah. a vibe. Mm -hmm. So thinking good things about your mate that are true, not fantasy, the better parts of them will influence the body language 90% of this communication story. And that takes us to the next point here in this, this myth about communication is that, you know, brutal honesty can really bludgeon your relationship to death. Well, if you can't, yeah, and what's, if you can't take brutal honesty, if you're not, if you see Simon Cowell and you <laughs> cringe, I mean, my yeah. God, he told a woman she looked like Jay Leno. I, I, I mean, there's just lines you don't cross right. with people and, you know, we've all done it. We bludgeoned our partner and expect him just to get up, but they've been pounded, yeah. and it takes a long time. And, and human nature dictates they get up and grab a stick and bludgeon you back, and that's when toxic and lethal communication escalates to a point of, of you know, just, just plain meanness. Honesty, it's brutal. Honesty is good. Keep the other person's feelings in account. And That's the, thing, the ticket with honesty. Yeah. Keep the other person's feelings in account. And, and first and foremost, learn to take your own inventory first and add it to the conversation. Yeah. You know, babe, sometimes I don't listen with a lot of, you know, compassion. Sometimes I need to hear it again before I get it, you know. Take your own inventory, and I'll tell you why, because if you don't take it, she'll be taking it for you. And, and it's just what Jesus said. He said, you know, look, before you look at the speck in your brother's eye, examine the moat in your own, I mean, um, no, I mean the log in your own, the speck, okay. he said the moat in, the, I sometimes I get these things wrong, okay, okay. sorry, I'm going to start over, Jesus said, before you look at the speck in your brother's eye, look at the log in your own, there it take is. your own inventory, it's good, it's healing, because then you'll feel honest in your transactions, you're owning your stuff, and if you have to tell your partner something that's not working for you, you're going to know how hard it was to see your own flaw. And another way of saying that is that people who live in glass houses should make love in the basement. <laughs> okay, we're going to move to myth number five, and right. that is egalitarian marriage is easier than that old traditional marriage. You know, yeah. egalitarian, you know, like that equality stuff. It's good in theory, like communism. Uh -huh. It just... Yeah. Doesn't work. Okay, it really doesn't. Because back in except the, in Cuba, well, you know, I mean, the uh, average income is uh, about two hundred dollars a year, and that works, doesn't right, it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well. Um, in reality, couples are really <laughs> conflicted over gender role expectations. I mean, I see women all the time who are working women, uh, career women, brilliant women, and out comes the baby, and you are the sole breadwinner, dude. You know, and and the guy is kind of shocked, like what? Or you know, speaking from the male perspective, the woman starts out earning yeah. the male, and, and oh, that's threatening. Okay. Yeah, and or mm -hmm. and he starts saying, "I want you to give a little more money to this." We don't have the answer for you. Okay, you got to work it out. You got to work it out. It's going to be a long conversation. But don't throw the traditional baby out with you know the egalitarian bathwater either. You know, we really have to figure out how to find a balance because you know most of these traditions. You know, just didn't come about in the 50s, folks. It's been, you know, tens of thousands of years of evolution of the family system. And I want you to know that the family is the basic unit of society. If we don't maintain some, you know, semblance and some sort of normative structure uh, of the family that persists, um, our society will crumble. August Comte, the, you know, the father of sociology, made that the most incredible message of his entire theoretical career. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so if you're going to couple find the up, if you're going to couple up and even if it looks, you know, you're strange looking people with strange, you know, whatever, you're okay. <laughs> I don't just learn not to abandon each One other. One eye in the middle of the forehead? <laughs> okay. <right. laughs> okay. Yeah. 
But if there's two of you, it'll make a great couple. Okay. <laughs> not okay. exactly what I meant, but that's cool. okay. close enough. All right. Um, there, it, yeah, there's a need okay, <laughs> to develop a, a good division of labor. And uh, you know, and, and, a, and a distribution of. I will never use power tools. <laughs> okay, thank God. <laughs> okay. Except a blender. You're very good with that. That's I right. can do the blender. Okay. Okay. But some things I just don't like to do. I don't want to do. I don't like loud things. Jerry's in charge of loud things. I like building I and constructing yeah. and destructing. Okay. And I like to make music, and and I do like to make minestrone and all those kinds of things. And I make music too. We we, we play, play guitar together. And sing together. Yeah. And she plays. Fine concert piano. But the thing about it it's is wet. this, okay, <laughs> what do you do? You're great. Right. Is get ready for a long discussion with you and your mate, you know, b until it feels win-win. Because you're going to have to find a balance that'll work for you because there is no one single formula uh, about how to divide these things yeah, up. Yeah, I was working with a couple lately and they were so cool because they both just said, man, we are just like our parents. They just admitted it and their dysfunctional ways are ours. There it is. Okay, we got uh, oh, two more myths really? and two more minutes. Aye, aye, aye. Number six. Myth. Yes. Children solidify a marriage. Let's speak the unspeakable. Children are an enormous threat to your marriage, <laughs> yeah. especially if you're married to have kids. The reason, well, those of you who have kids already know it, Children take up a lot of your time and energy, God bless them. This is not against kids, this is just the truth. If you want to have a honeymoon kind of marriage where you spend a lot of time with each other and you're working your 40 hour week job, those weekends are about soccer matches and stuff a lot of the time. And you're running from the ballet recital to the violin performance to the whatever, Odyssey of the Minds And, and if you do that, and we certainly do with four kids, God bless you, the thing is you've got to prioritize your marriage. You've got to make time for each other You've got to have a date night. You've got to have some special time. There's got to be some you have a some closed bedroom door. Quality. And and this is the thing: the prioritize your marriage. Making time for each other creates the best chance for your kids to grow up in an intact family. So it's for them. Yes. Myth number seven: the sexual revolution has made great sex easier than ever. No. I don't think so. No, because everybody's having great sex. You know, it's sex in the city. Oh, aren't we also sexy having great sex? That is a fantasy, folks. Even those yeah. shoes she's wearing are a fantasy. Nobody can walk in those. Um, the, the truth is, is that sex can, it's like everything else. It's like uh, your digestion. It goes through good periods and bad periods, and you've right. got to be able to talk to each other and about it. And the frustrations it. and dissatisfactions really come to the surface in a marriage because you're in bed with a third person. There's you, your mate, and the media. Mm -hmm. And that kind of influence needs to be out of the bedroom and instead find a healthy, uh, centered, love-based, realistic way of doing that sexual dance together. Deb, this has been fun. I'm Jerry Mines. And I'm Deborah Mines, and it's been a family affair. See you next time. All right. All right. Oh, my fair North Star, I have held to you dearly. Had asked you to steer me to one cloud scattered night. I got lost and in my travels. I met Leo the lion, met a king and met a giant with their Strong.